wonder woven. Man has been wonder woven from the subatomic particles that spin in the halls of the universe. From that chaos have been chosen the individual particles placed in sequence to form the body and mind of man. Clustered and nurtured in the wonder of the womb, they one day emerged as the body of a boy or a girl. As it grew, that body took in more of those particles of man. It put each one properly here and there. This one might be a part of the brain and another a part of a finger. Thus it was and thus it is that here we are, a unique mixture of subatomic particles formed into this wonder from the particles of the universe, formed into the wonder of man from the particles of the universe. Wonder woven. Now I've written hundreds of aphorisms, uh, they're just short sayings. You can never know the wonder of life. Wait a minute, say, say that again. Look here and say I've written hundreds of aphorisms. And here's a few. I've written hundreds of aphor aphorisms. Here. Say here, right here, look, look right here. Yeah, but you held your I'm hand. I'm sorry, I, I didn't okay. mean to. Okay, right. All right. here we go. Go ahead. Uh, I also have written hundreds of aphorisms. Just let me read a few very briefly to you. Uh, you can never know the wonder of life unless you remain aware that you are immersed in it. If nature does not necessarily speak in the language of love, does that mean that man should not? Sometimes it's easier to lie today than tell the truth. But what about tomorrow? Dawn is a dilemma, for without the darkness it could not be. Man has too great a potential to only walk where other feet have trod. I have 59 pages of these free <laughs> uh, aphorisms. Hi, I'm Jerry Andrus, and uh, welcome to my website. And uh, I've been involved in so many things, and uh, you have access to some of them on here. I'm deeply involved in three-dimensional optical illusions. I've uh, written a lot of free verse that is, much of it is encouraging people to more appreciate the wonder of life. And I've come up with uh, hundreds of sayings, aphorisms, etc. Uh, again, since I don't think there is anything paranormal, uh, that is the re one reason I'm so much interested in uh, three-dimensional optical illusions. Uh, and I've come up with things that you look at and your mind will, the processor in your head will tell you it's a box when it obviously isn't. And even if you know that it isn't a box, the processor in your head will frequently overpower what you know it is and says, I don't care whether you know it is not a box, it it looks like a box and that's what it would say. Uh, another thing I've, I've been involved in, uh, I've written hundreds of uh, poetic things, they're free verse and they're, a great many of them are trying to encourage people to realize the wonder of life. I happen to be an agnostic. I think when I'm dead, I'm dead and gone. But uh, I think I appreciate life a lot more than people who believe they'll have a, even a better life in uh, the future. I think this is the only chance we have. And also, after I'm dead, I hope that some of my writings and other things have helped people to have a better outlook on life. I got interested in magic in my early 20s probably and I started getting around other magicians and uh, in, in card magic I'd show them things ho hoping they'd be impressed so they'd show me all this wonderful stuff they saw at conventions and uh, then I went to conventions and I used to do uh, some of the magic I learned but eventually I realized that I would be better off and it would be better off for magic if I only did that which I've created myself which is the way my magic is nowadays. And also, I never ever dream of doing anything to belittle anybody or make anybody feel foolish. I can fool them because they're wonderful, I tell them so, and none of them need to feel foolish. 
ever since I've been around magicians, I've been speaking out against ever making anybody feel foolish. And mm -hmm. uh, I've made a dent. I've, I've had people tell me that, uh, that it made a dent. Uh, the uh, one time, when I was in the seventh grade, I think, I, I guess I started using my brain to reason. And I went to Madison School and I said to the other kids in Madison School, how come Madison School is better than Central School? Just because we go to Madison School? How come Albany's better than Corvallis? How come Oregon's the best state in the Union? We grew up in a culture that let us grow up that way. And that is, from my perspective, if you let yourself believe that, then you've, you, you've turned off your reasoning power. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do in many cases. If uh, like this is not a good example at all, but I, I keep a car until it's about worn out and then buy another used one. And I am honor bound by my own standards. If I go to a used car lot and make some kind of a deal to buy a used car, I always tell them everything is wrong. Or if an individual buys my old used car, I, I would tell them everything I know is wrong with it. And, uh, Sounds like you're an honest man. Well, I certainly try to be. Uh, the, the last big lie I told that I can think of, I was in the army overseas, and uh, they needed, I was in Paris, and then they needed all able-bodied men in the infantry after the bows. And they said, you, you, and you. We went out and uh, took infantry training, then we're going up to the front. And uh, so, some buddies of mine, we, we went, to, so they were going to take officers' training. and. Uh, I wasn't interested, except finally I thought, well, if I go to officer's training school, maybe the war will be over. As it is now, I'm heading up for the front. So uh, I agreed that I'd go with them to take the test. And One of my buddies was the first one that took it, and he came out in the hall, and maybe there's ten of us there, and they pounced on him, what, what did they ask you, what did they ask you? And he said, one thing they asked me was, what letter isn't on the phone dial? And it's Q. Now, I didn't know that Q wasn't on the phone dial at all. And most of the other guys probably didn't too. So when I went in there, there were three officers. They would ask me a question and I would look them right in the eye, never drop my eyes. And the, I, do, I do not normally lie except to protect somebody's life or something. And this officer said, what letter's not on the phone dial? And I looked him in the eye and I told a flat out lie. I said, I don't know, sir, because I wouldn't have known. <laughs> Uh, so you didn't want to get in trouble with the because you, somebody else had well, told no, you that. Well, no, yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to lie. I, I would have, I did know it, but I don't think I could have said I didn't know it five minutes ago until he told us. Well, I'd love to hear you talk about the kind of energy that gets released in a person when they, when they, 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 they've known known they're being fooled. But it intrigues them, right? Isn't it? Some, there's oh. something happens to a person when, when well, they're shown magic. Yeah, and let's say that. that uh, but in one case, one of the things happens is, and of course, any time a magician, another magician fools me, I just openly say that fooled me. I have no idea what you did. And uh, uh, but when they expose magic on television, which uh, has been done, and this I can't think of the fellow's name uh, that exposed lots of things on television. If I did that, I would feel lower than a snake's belly in a wagon run mm -hmm. because it ruins it for the people. The fascination of magic is that it looks like it's magic, but if if you know how it's done, you sit in the audience and. It wouldn't have anywhere near the fascination that it mm -hmm. does when it looks like magic. And what is that fascination? What is that fa fascination that people have? Well, we don't in real life. We don't see anything that's magic, as far as I'm concerned. We don't. Everything that we see is following the laws of nature, and uh, so if we if we can see something that looks like it isn't. Now there are lots of people that believe in the paranormal. Uh, and, and people who believe in UFOs. I'm not saying that, that a lot of people don't believe in things like that, but when it comes to objective evidence, uh, apparently, I don't believe there is anything paranormal. And again, it, it's, it's fascinating to see something that, that looks like it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the excitement. 
Right. I've always, I think every kid has always been fascinated with magic and somebody does magic because it makes them wonder what's beyond what they normally think of as reality. Did you know? Yeah, the, the, uh, speaking of kids and magic, uh, the kids come around and ring my doorbell. I'll never let, never let a kid in the house without a parent. But uh, they come and ring the door and want me to do a trick for them and I'll do a trick for them and sometimes they'll, they'll want to know. And I said, no, it wouldn't be right to tell you, but then it's magic. And, and as you get older, if you want to do magic, you can find there are magic clubs and there are books on magic and, and, and so forth. Hmm. And uh, uh, several years ago, the doorbell rang. I went and standing on the back porch is a grown man with a beard. And he said, Jerry, he said, you don't remember me. My name is such and such, and I was that little kid that lived down the street a block from here, and I want to tell you how much we appreciated, how kind you were to us, and mm -hmm. you could sit and talk, so forth and so on. And one of the problems, I think, in life is our human nature, we have to be born with an instinct of self-preservation. Otherwise, we wouldn't have got as far as we have. But since we can also reason, then, by my standards, we should realize uh, my instinct of self-preservation tells me I'm more important than anybody else. But if I have brain one and reason, I have to say, wait a minute, his instinct of, of uh, self-preservation is just as strong as mine and just as important to him as mine is to me. Therefore, I should treat people as I, be, as I would be treated. Mm -hmm. uh... Have you taught uh, uh, magic? Well, I, I do lectures around. I just did a lecture uh, last night uh, here in San Francisco area. And then I perform at the Magic Castle in Hollywood uh, a couple of times a year for a week uh, doing close-up magic. Hmm. And uh, I, as a magician, I can fool people that are much, much smarter than I am. But it's because I know something they don't know. and. Uh, Therefore, I have no right to take the attitude of, ha ha, I fooled you. Uh, it's, we are kind of on automatic, uh, what would you call it, automatic pilots, not the right word. Uh, when we see things, normally we don't have to decide. You don't look at a car and wonder what it is. Mm -hmm. We're on automatic pilot and all these decisions are made beneath the conscious level and that's one, one of the reasons that we can be so easily fooled. And uh, a real intelligent person, I don't care how intelligent they are, they can be fooled uh, because, again, we're making these subconscious decisions all the time. Hmm. Assumptions. assumptions. Assumptions is a big issue, isn't it? We have, yep. to, we have to be able to make those assumptions, otherwise we can't exactly. be fooled. Exactly. And... Uh, this is totally unrelated, but I've thought of a, of a uh, just to prove a point, uh, let's say that, uh, that the person is the president of the company and he comes in at 11 o'clock in the morning and he goes in his office and there's bookshelves there and stuff and his desk is no longer there or anything and he comes back out and he says, what's going on here? What happened to my office? Well, now everybody in the building is in on it. And they say, what do you mean what happened to your office? Your office is up in the other end. And they show it to him up there. And everybody he meets <laughs> verifies everything, you see. Well, a sane person, I think they could be driven insane and nothing flat with something like that. <laughs> We're always being tested, aren't we? Yes, absolutely. I, I think television is one of the greatest things, you know, they're always trying to pull us, pull, yeah. teach us something that we, that black is white, white is black. And and I've, black. I've had tricks pulled on me um, uh, by mag magicians and uh, I, a trick that I invented uh, years ago, they handed me the trick to do and they had gaffed it, you see, and I didn't realize that. <laughs> uh, 
there was something else I thought of in that vein, but it, it, it escapes me. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were you talking about? Well, I was uh, I was talking about the assumptions that people make. I right. think that you know a lot of a lot of people uh, jump to conclusions and they right. they want to see what they want to see rather than oh, what yes, is there. Right. Right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, one uh, here's a, a good example uh, of uh, wanting to see what you want to see. And I, the thing I thought of a picture that we're in a we're in a building and somebody comes rushing in and says there's a UFO out there, and we go outside, and let's say I'm a believer in UFOs. I'm actually not, but let's say I am, and let's say that you are not, and I I see a light up there and it's wavering a little bit, and and uh, yes, there it is, and he said, and uh, you would say, no, Jerry, that's the planet Mars. And it, uh, uh, it kind of, or a star, or some star, some it kind of twinkles, and and there's an autokinetic effect where if you just stare at one star planet, it tends to look like it moves. And and then the, the other fellows there said, "No, you're both wrong. I strung a big light between these two, uh, a little LED light on a fine wire between the top of those two big tall trees, and that's what, and that's all you're seeing, which would be all you're seeing." And then the next night, we're in there again. Somebody comes running, UFO out there. We go out there, and, and somebody says, Oh, my goodness, there's a UFO. We say, No, it's, it's a light strung between the two trees, right? Here's the guy that did it. And then somebody says, No, it isn't. I turned his light off, and we have a balloon up there <laughs> with a light on it. And now you could go on, not forever, but you could have a third night. You go out and, and the guy said, no, no, that's a balloon. Well, they could have something beyond that. So uh, we, 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 we jump to conclusions, and the conclusion we jump to is partially uh, due to our past experience and the, the way we look at things. Mm -hmm.